Hello students, I am back with a new video and today we are going to discuss a comparative account of the oviparous organisms over viviparous organisms and viviparous organism. So let's have a view here. First of all, we must know that what are oviparous, oviviparous and viviparous organism. So the oviparity represents the trait of laying eggs outside the body. Means oviparous organisms are the organisms which lay eggs outside the body. Okay. Now, what do you mean by oviviparity? So oviviparity is also the act of laying the eggs. But here the eggs are not laid outside the body. Here the eggs are kept within the mother body only. Right. And then they are hatched inside the uh, mother body. And after that the young ones become mature in the mother body. And then they are delivered out. This is called as the ovoviviparity. Okay. And viviparity is simple. It is the act of giving birth to the young ones directly. Okay. So again what is oviparity? Oviparity is the act of laying eggs right outside the body. In oviviparity what happens? The laying of eggs is done but the eggs are not laid outside the body. The eggs are remaining within the mother body only till they are hatched. Okay. And in viviparity what happens? The young ones are actually delivered out of the body. Is it clear? Now what is type of fertilization? What type of fertilization is found in the oviparous organism? So in oviparous organism the fertilization can be internal or external. The fertilization may be internal or external in oviparous organisms. But in ovoviviparous organism the fertilization is always internal while in viviparous organisms also the fertilization is internal. So type of fertilization in oviparous organism can be internal or external and in ovoviviparous organism and viviparous organism the fertilization is always internal. Is it clear? Now eggshell, eggshell. As we know very well that oviparous organism lay eggs outside the body and they need protection from the predators, protection from the environment etc. So therefore the oviparous organisms right which lay eggs the eggs are actually surrounded by a hard calcareous shell. So what I have written here the fertilized eggs have a hard calcareous shell. Calcareous shell means a shell which is composed of calcium. Ovoviviparous organisms also have a shell around their eggs but here a soft shell is present. Why? Because eggs are not laid out. Eggs are found inside the, inside the mother's body only. That's why the eggs are surrounded by a soft shell. But in viviparous organisms, the eggs are not surrounded by the shells. Though they have the membranes. Egg membranes are there, but shells are absent. So here a hard calcareous shell is present around the egg. Here soft shell is present around the egg. And here the eggs are not surrounded by the shells. Fine. Now laying of the eggs. Yes, of course, oviparous organisms uh, are laying the egg here also. The ovoviviparous organisms are also laying the egg but not outside the body, inside the body of mother. But in viviparous organism there is no laying of the eggs. Okay. Now nutrients to the developing embryo. Who provides the nutrient? Who provides the nutrient to the developing embryo? So in oviparous organism the nutrients are provided to the developing embryo by the egg yolk here also in ovoviviparous organism the nutrients are provided to the developing embryo by the egg yolk but here in viviparous organism right the nutrition is provided to the developing embryo by the mother via or through the placenta is it clear now placental connection here there is no placental connection or no placenta is found in the oviparous organisms in ovoviviparous organisms also there is no placenta found but in viviparous organism, embryo is connected to the placenta which is meant for many purposes, say for gaseous exchange, say for providing the nutrients, say for excretion, etc. Okay. 
Now embryonic development. As we know very well that oviparous organism lay the eggs outside the body. So definitely the embryonic development occurs outside the mother body. In oviviparous organism, the eggs are not laid out of the mother body. Okay, so definitely the embryonic development occurs inside the mother body and here also the embryonic development occurs inside the mother body. Okay, and the best known examples of the oviparous organisms are reptiles, birds, you have heard about many reptiles, you have heard about the birds and all have a hard calcareous shell around it. Okay, so whether they are the reptiles or the birds, they all are oviparous uh, organisms. Now, the examples of ovoviviparous organisms are some reptiles, not all reptiles. Generally, the reptiles are oviparous, but there are some reptiles which are ovoviviparous. Sharks, right? Sharks are definitely a very good example of ovoviviparous organism. Uh, snakes, some snakes are also uh, the examples of ovoviviparous organism and all the rays, okay? are the examples of ovoviviparous organism and viviparous organism we know the best known example of the viviparous organisms are we the humans okay dogs etc are good examples of viviparous organism so this was a comparative account of oviparous ovoviviparous and viviparous organism generally students what is the problem that in books you will get the information about the oviparous organism and the viviparous organisms but the books are lacking of giving the comparative account of all the three oviparous, ovoviviparous and viviparous organisms. So in today's video we have discussed all these three together. So keep watching my videos. In the next videos I will be uploading many new videos related to the reproductive system. Thanks a lot.